Hello, folks, and welcome to what is the biggest project that I have ever done so far. Uh, not that I plan on anything really topping this, at least certainly not for a while. This is going to be a look at some of the most violent tornadoes in the United States. This is, of course, as you can see, part one. There's a total of five parts here, going to be looking over 20 tornadoes in total. So four highlightable tornadoes each here. We also have honorable mentions as well that are included in the mix here, of course, because of course, this is not a comprehensive list. This would need to be, even if I upped it to five tornadoes per video, that would be a minimum of a 12 part series because the number of F5s and EF5s throughout the, that have ever happened in the US is what, close to 70, if I'm not mistaken, 68, 69, nice. So without further ado, some more uh, disclaimers before we get started. Again, not a comprehensive list. This is also mostly backed up by fact. There is a little bit of my opinion mixed in there just for, you know, good controversial measure because why not? And also, if there's a tornado that you do not, that you thought deserved the spotlight but didn't get it, if there's a tornado that I just straight up didn't mention at all, or there's something that you just disagree with, go ahead and just comment it down below. I am, of course, willing to hear anyone out that uh, is able to back up uh, their uh, claims. And uh, all of the sources for this video will be in the description. Probably the most amount of sources I've ever had in, a vid in any of these videos. <laughs> so without further ado, we are going to be looking at the honorable mentions. First up is the Plainfield of Illinois F5. This is a very weird tornado to me, and that I believe that it was at least F4, but I'm not going to disagree with the NWS rating. I am not a forensic, sorry, I am not a structural engineer, I am not a mechanical engineer, I am not a tornadoologist, and I am not a meteorologist. I would rather have y'all take their opinions over mine. With that being said, with none, with none of those being available at this time, and you just have me, um, this thing is weird, <laughs> like I said. It is the only F5 to be rated surely from ground scouring done in a field, which is something that uh, even EF2s can do depending on the soil consistency and wind rowing corn isn't necessarily the hardest thing for a tornado to accomplish. This thing I will at least rate in my mind at least F4, uh, or at the very, very minimum, very high-end EF3, sorry, F3, as this thing was high-end F3 and F4 in the communities that it hit. A contender for the EF5 status originally is the Tuscaloosa, Alabama EF4 that happened on the infamous May 27th of 2011. This tornado has official wind speeds of 190 miles per hour or 306 kilometers per hour. Due to an, an apartment complex that was destroyed by this EF4, it was suggested that this thing might have been EF5. And... This EF4 is absolutely deserving. This is one of the most menacing looking tornadoes that I have ever seen. And I think that a lot of people would agree with that. <laughs> if you've seen any photos or videos of that thing, Tuscaloosa was a monster. What was also a monster was the Chickasha, Oklahoma EF4 that happened just under a month later. Also having a pawn... Uh, the ArcGIS track that I found, 190 miles per hour or 306 kilometers per hour wind speeds. Which is a little bit confusing because you may hear that it was 200 miles per hour and it is officially rated 200, so why do I have it at 190? Uh, simply because I double, triple, quadruple checked the, uh, the track of this tornado and out of all of the little red triangles on its track using ArcGIS, I did not find a 200 mile per hour wind speed indicator. I found a bunch of unknowns, 
great. I found a bunch of 190s. I found a lot of 170, but no 200s. So that is where that is going to stay in my mind and how it's typed out here. The Mayfield EF4 that happened in Mayfield, Kentucky in December 2021 is also pretty well deserving of that 190 per mile per hour rating. Again, 306 kilometers per hour. An absolutely devastating storm. This thing was, I would say, plausibly EF5. Um, however, what is even closer to EF5 is the Rolling Fork Mississippi EF4, the first ever EF4 to be rated 195 miles per hour. That is 314 kilometers per hour. The 195 mile per hour indicator seen here in the bottom middle. Uh, this this photo in the middle right is from Mayfield. Up top above that we have Chick uh, yes Chickasha, and down at the bottom uh, left we also have Chickasha. Um, forgot to include the Tuscaloosa photo in there. I'm sorry about that. We move on to the Rainsville Rainsville Alabama EF5 that happened on May sorry. April, April 27th, 2011, apologies. This is one of the, if I'm not mistaken, just two EF5s with no exact wind speed to its name, with it just being listed as 200 plus miles per hour. This was one of the four EF5s of the 2011 super outbreak and exhibited some extreme house removal characteristics, uh, tearing a concrete porch off of a home, flattening others, foundations, some swept, an 800 pound, that is 362 kilogram, anchored a safe, so a safe made of presumably metal, steel, heavy, 800 pounds, anchored into presumably concrete with more metal, was removed from its anchored place, thrown 193 meters that's around 250 yards it's a very rough estimate and also had its door removed now the main point of a safe is that the door stays on there and i don't know if this safe door was open or not when it was uh, hit by the tornado i don't know if there's any damage to the safe that caused the door to be removed what i do know is that the door was not attached to the safe, which is insane. You are going to hear me say insane, crazy, mind-blowing, out of this world a lot. Uh, you can take a shot of preferably water or something non-alcoholic when I do that because it's probably going to happen at least more than one. It's going to happen one more time at minimum throughout this series here. <laughs> We also saw that there would be pavement scouring along multiple roads. However, I could not find a photo of this, unfortunately. What we do also know is that this tornado would partially excavate a storm pit and upheaved by around three to six inches another one. For those that don't know, a storm pit is essentially a uh, semi-connected basement. Um, instead of it being uh, more so attached to the home directly, it's kind of... It's either outside uh, the home or a little bit further away from the home. Some can be completely underground, like the one that was upheaved a little bit, or partially um, in the ground by around like easily like four fifths of it being underground. This uh, storm pit that was partially excavated is already a third of the way above ground, and it was excavated by another third, so a majority of it was visible now very interesting soil characteristics for that to happen. I, I, I do wonder what happened there. This tornado came from an extremely cyclic and prominent supercell. That means that this thing had all the energy available to it. It was out by itself, called discrete, most likely at least. I, given that most of them uh, in the super outbreak were. And would also produce the Ringgold Georgia EF4 here. So a pretty violent cell 
definitely a lot going on there. The Joplin tornado happened just under a month later. Joplin in EF5 is also one of the few EF5s with no exact wind speed, it also being listed as just 200 miles per hour plus. According to the Army Corps of Engineers, this thing was EF4 in less than five minutes, which means that it went from not existing to, let's say, 170 miles per hour within five minutes. Given that the Army Corps of Engineers uh, website is the only place that listed this information, I, I really want to trust that, but at the same time, that is just seemingly unreal, you know, that is a large amount of wind to happen in a short amount of time. So, I'm going to tentatively believe it. I'm not saying that the Army Corps of Engineers is lying. I'm saying that it is just hard to wrap the head around, at the very least. This thing would remove manhole covers and scour pavements. Pavement, of course, you know, is meant to stay in place, as well as manhole covers, uh, unless you remove it with tools. And this thing did not have crowbars and such to remove it. It would just yeeted it away as we can see in the top right here presumably this arrow here is showing the direction where the manhole cover went as we can see there's also no uh, signs of damage around the pavement here so this thing literally just got ripped out and not um had there was no decrease in integrity is what i'm trying to say to my knowledge the who knows if the uh the manhole cover was uh bent in some way shape or form that would require a lot of force too a part parking stops multiple that were anywhere from 100 pounds to 300 pounds that is 45 to 136 kilos also around the same weight as those manhole covers by the way were completely removed as well these parking stops are also anchored into the asphalt or concrete as well so they are also meant to not move and they were moved it was found that Joplin obliterated 22 homes at EF5 strength, and well more than 100 were destroyed at EF4 strength. This thing would upheave a step and uh, a foundation step and steel structure that was steel reinforced so badly that it was severely bent and essentially had to be replaced, and uh, severely bent and cracked, that is. An approximately 15,000 pound, that is 6,800 uh, kilo, semi-truck was thrown 114 meters from where it was and wrapped around a tree. 114 meters is something like 150, 160 yards. That's a lot of force. It's also a lot of force required to, bend, to roll up like paper steel trusses. That is, that I don't know what else to describe that other than insane, really. You know, that is mind-blowing. Also, here in uh, the, oops, sorry. In the uh, bottom middle here, we have a completely intact playground, it seems, with destruction beyond it. And then we also see in the red uh, rectangle here a light pole that was uh is removed at the very base of the light pole. Granted, the foundation is still there. I have no idea what happened here, to be honest. I don't know if Mother Nature had a twist, has a twisted sense of humor. Well, I mean, she already does, but if it just decided to just leave the playground structure alone, the tornado went over it and just left it alone. Most likely, this was done by debris uh, hitting this light pole. Either way, that is still pretty impressive for both the light pole and the playground. So, some odd characteristics there. The Goldsby, Oklahoma EF4 would happen just two days later, and was found upon survey to be 200 miles per hour strong. Unfortunately, according to the ArcGIS website, many of the DI's damage indicators uh, did not have wind speeds, which makes which made this thing frustrating to look over at the very least as I was just wanting to try and find some damage photos and also have some descriptions for y'all as we can see here in the pink in the uh, middle middle right. 
This thing does have more EF4 indicators than Chickasha, however. It also had a longer path than Chickasha and happened just half an hour later. This thing also had multiple stretches of EF4 damage, that being two compared to just one from Chickasha. Goldsby uh, caused cycloidal impact scars, so this is different from just cycloidal marks, which is more of ground scouring or wind rowing. Impact scars are, as you can assume, something hits the ground and then is drug across it, or sorry, through it, and then is lifted back up. It takes a lot of force to be able to do that. And Goldsby, as we can see here, absolutely exhibited that. <clears throat> Ultimately, Goldsby was not rated EF5 due to particular details. This was washers missing from anchor bolts, anchor bolts not being uh, in sufficient spacing, even though they were present, anchor bolts not being bent at all, indicating a lack of stress forces on them. Uh, it's the minute details that prevent ratings like this. And while sure, yeah, frustrating, uh, it also makes complete sense. It Structural engineers, mechanical engineers need to be detailed, need to be thorough. And it is only through this thoroughness that we get this 200 mile per hour EF4. Also a 200 mile per hour EF4 is the Rochelle, Illinois tornado that happened in May of 2015, sorry, April 2015. This tornado would, would unfortunately intensify to EF4 when it was in Rochelle, because why not, right? And had a concrete, sorry, and dislodged the concrete walkway of one home. So thanks to the tornado for at least leaving the walkway. But wait a minute, I don't have a house. I can't walk up to something that's not there anymore, tornado. All of the goodwill just thrown out the window. Well, thrown out, thrown in the air because there's no windows anymore either. This thing exhibited some intense ground scouring, as we can see in the in really all four of these photos here, particularly in the bottom middle, and some wind rowing. Wind rowing is the um, fine alignment or um, the deposition of debris. So instead of your house being in front of you for around a mile, maybe it being over to the left, to the right of you, in a tree behind you, up above you, instead it is all right in front of you for half a mile. Thanks, Tornado, for letting me know where my house is now, I guess. You can absolutely see cases of that in the top right. Fairdale would be hit at high-end EF3 strength, and this thing had more than a dozen indicators of 200 mile per hour winds. A lot of 200 mile per hour indicators. So what did we see from all the from all these tornadoes, all four? Well, we saw that two happened in both April and May. Uh, quick thing here, one of these months will win out. Uh, if you type which one is right in the comments or just guess it in your mind, then you get bragging rights for eternity, obviously. Okay. The totals from these tornadoes combined are 185 deaths and more than 1,200 people injured with just under $3 billion in damage done. It is worth noting that a majority of all three of these figures come from the Joplin EF5 with it having 158 deaths, over 800 injuries, and it being the costliest tornado in the United States, or just of all time, if I'm not mistaken, at 2.81 billion dollars in damage. That, folks, is all that I have for this first part. The next video will be the second part of this series, which I hope to see you there, of course. I also hope that you learned something from this video. I certainly did a few things while researching, of course. Thank you all so much for watching.